Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, The Informed Citizen. My name is Dwayne Brown and I'm your host. Today's video is going to be a conclusion of a series of videos talking about government. Now I've already spent time talking about the federal government, specifically talking about the judicial, the executive, and the legislative branch. Then we talked about the state governments and how those governments are formed and modeled based on how the federal government is designed. And today we're going to talk about municipalities, you know, cities and towns. We're going to discuss the curation, the purpose, and the structures of um, municipalities. So the question is always, why is this important? Well, it's important for a number of reasons. First of all, cities and towns are geographically more proximal to you than the federal government or state entities. And because they're more proximal to you, they're in a better position to understand and deliver services to you. Representatives are also going to be more responsive to your input. So if you can just imagine in Washington, D.C., when you're talking about national level senators and representatives, the laws um, that they pass is going to be laws that apply generally to the nation as a whole. But that's going to be different than your unique needs um, from where you live. So it's important to sort of understand how cities and towns work because that close proximity are the ones that are going to pass policy and laws that's going to more directly affect you. Now, as it always so stated before, it's important that the sources come from legitimate areas. This is a learning process for myself and for those of you all who choose to listen. So for today's um, video. We're going to get our information from nlc.org or atlas.com and courses.lumenlearning.com. Um, those are really good sources for getting information on the subject matter we're talking about today. So we've heard people talk about or uh, mention towns and cities, and it can be a little bit confusing about what the difference between a town and a city. Well, historically, towns and cities were distinguished by the distinct methods of deliberation. For example, all qualified citizens in a town deliberate and vote together, while cities have representatives who vote. Today, the distinction between towns and cities, and similarly with other nomenclature, generally is one of population size. So back then, you know, when I say back then, I'm talking historically, a town was, okay, qualified members of the town, there's some kind of um, public policy thing that needs to be addressed. They will show up, they will deliberate, and then they will vote on what will happen. But in the city, um, you're going to have elected representatives who are going to make those decisions on behalf of, of the citizens. Not everybody shows up um, for that. Um, here in Atlanta, we have councilmen elected from different districts within the city that will make these um, policy decisions on our behalf. Um, cities are distinguished from other urban centers like towns and suburban. Um, by their relatively large size and function on uh, population and status conferred by the government. A city is defined as an urban center with a larger geographical area and population than a town. It is densely populated area with a legally defined boundary and whose populations are engaged in non-agricultural um, livelihood uh, sources though. So um, a town on the other hand is generally defined as an urban settlement that is larger than a village but smaller than a city. Towns are smaller in geographical size and population than cities in the same country. And that's from worldatlas.com. Now, how do we get to a city or a town? Well, they're usually um, established by state law. So um, state law is, is, is where uh, the establishment of a, of a city is going to begin. And it's done that via a municipal charter. Now, a charter is uh, a founding document of a, of a, of a city or, or a town. And you can think of it as the city-level constitution. It talks about the functions of the city. It talks about the roles and the powers and authority of many representatives that deals with the uh, city. Uh, one thing about cities is that they're usually located within the boundaries of larger counties. So, for example... Um, I live in the city of Atlanta, and Atlanta is mostly in Fulton County, but it does cross over into other counties like DeKalb County and uh, Cobb County. And because of the fact that 
Atlanta is such a big city and that it uh, crosses over several counties, um, that, means, that means that there's certain regional authorities um, that have to sort of coordinate services over those different boundaries, okay? Because counties are political bodies established by the state. They have their own leaders and stuff, right? But if a city crosses over that, then you have to have a way of sort of unifying uh, operations that serve the city across those county boundaries. And when that happens, uh, regional authorities are usually um, the folks who step in to do that, though. So, for instance, let's talk about uh, transportation, right? A bus system that services the city of Atlanta is a bus system that's going to have to cover those counties that I mentioned before, Cobb County, DeKalb, Fulton County. Now, all of those counties have their own um, commissioners and, 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 and people who run those those counties. So the way to um, sort of smooth out how, the, how that transportation happens across those different areas, um, you have a regional authority. In this case, you have MARTA, which is the Metro Atlanta Regional Transit Authority. And if you remember, regional authorities, uh, special authorities are also governed by these established by the state. We talked about that in the earlier um, broadcast. The example we gave um, that I gave earlier was the school board, right? That's a specific, um, a specific need uh, of a city, um, you know, and, and, and school boards are established by state government in order to facilitate that need. And they have their own school board president and stuff like that, right? So something like uh, transportation is another example of one of these special uh, governing bodies that pass laws, uh, not laws, but that pass regulations and stuff to help facilitate a special need. So there's something to kind of think about. You know, cities are big, densely populated urban centers who cross over several county um, uh, boundaries. Uh, cities have their own leadership, but depending on how big and complicated the city is and how much it sort of crosses over different boundaries, in addition to the leadership of the city, you're going to have other governing agencies that help facilitate special needs and interests you know, that serves the city. All right. Now, when you're talking about how a city is structured, there are two basic systems that play in the United States. There's the mayor council system, and then there's the council manager system. In the mayor council city uh, system, voters elect both a mayor and the members of the city council. The city council performs the legislative functions of, and the mayor, the executive functions. Under this system, the mayor may be given a great deal of authority or only limited powers. Under a strong mayor system, the mayor will be able to veto actions of the council, appoint fire heads to the departments, and produce a budget. Under a weak mayor system, the mayor has little authority compared to, as compared to the council and acts in a ceremony capacity as the spokesperson for the city. And all of that long discussion came from LumenLearning.com. Now, in the council manager system of government, Either the members of the city council are elected by voters along with the mayor who presides over the council, or the voters elect members of the city council, and then the mayor is chosen from among them. In either case, the city council would then appoint a city manager to carry out the administrative functions of the municipal government. This frees the city council to address political functions such as setting policy and formulating the budget. So in this system, you know, we're going to vote for either a mayor or a council, or if we don't vote for mayor and council, we just vote for the council, and then the council will decide who the mayor is. And either way, in order to free them to do those political things that we associate with leadership, on um, whether it's the federal, state, or, or local level, the city manager is the one that's going to be responsible for actually running the city and making sure the day-to-day -day important things are taken care of. And that frees up, as it said here, um, the councilman and the mayor to do a more political um, things. All right, so some of the responsibilities of a city manager is to um, make sure that there's clean water um, for the city, um, sewage disposal, take care of the parks, make sure the street lights work, 
make sure the streets are paved and um in repair and you know dealing with stadiums now this is not an exhaustive list of the responsibilities of the city mayors or even of the city managers or even mayors though but that's some idea about you know what they what they're responsible for um so that's pretty much the end of the uh discussion on municipalities and cities you know so in conclusion um, it's important to understand that when you talk about governments, especially in the big, large area like the United States, the responsibilities of government needs to be narrow and focused. So that's how we get to um, down to cities. There is a national government with the Congress that passed laws that deals with the nation as a whole. Those laws are implemented um, by the individual states. The states themselves, in turn, create smaller structures known as counties that have its own leadership. The counties um in turn have within their borders different cities and so that way you sort of narrow down um on the sphere of of, of governance uh and you, and you get it narrowed down and you get it focused to help provide a service to the individual person and cities and towns are really that last level of, of governance and they're more proximate to to its citizens and then in a better position to deliver services so moving forward, um, if there's something that's going on in your area, whether we're talking about crime or we're talking about disrepair of streets, or even if we're talking about how um, you know the education of the kids are going, um, most city councils have public hearings, and because they are elected from districts within the city, uh, they're going to be more responsive to people showing up and voicing their opinions. And also, um, petitions can be a bit more effective on this lower level than say it would be on the national and federal level. So, you know, the, the, the city governments, the town you live in and stuff, the things that they do and pass is going to affect your life much more directly and um, more impactfully than anything that happens in um the state and in washington dc or well, more washington dc than the states so even though the federal government and the things that happen in washington get more uh press time and it, it gets the attention of us uh, more than the city the important thing is really those local things though so i encourage you to get more politically active start there find out when the city councils are having their meetings go up and show up and and express to these people that represent you um, whether they're meeting or failing to meet the standards that you that you have.